Okay, almost at the end of this section on inheritance, there is also when you look at two genes for one characteristic. Um, so this is where two genes are coding for just one character, not two characteristics, so not like we saw with the dihybrid cross where you're looking at seed color, for example, and uh, pollen shape. This is just one characteristic, okay? But it is coded for by two genes. The first example we're gonna look at is something called epistasis. Now epistasis is one gene masks or interferes with another gene. The word comes from the Greek root, uh, from, the word comes from Greek roots meaning standing upon. So one gene sort of masks, blocks another gene as it were. The, the alleles that get masked are said to be hypostatic to the epistatic alleles which mask them. So fur color in mice is really a nice example of this. It's actually controlled by two genes, gene A and gene C. Gene C is epistatic to gene A. So gene C is the so dominant one, as it were, which is masking or A. A is hypostatic, okay? So gene C codes for pigment production. All right. If the mouse has dominant C, then it will be able to produce pigment. Now the color of that pigment is then determined by its A gene. If it has a capital A, it will have an agouti coat, a kind of brown mottled coat. And if it has a small A, it will have black, okay? But if you don't have the capital C in the first place, that doesn't matter what your A gene is, whether it's A or big A or little a, because you can't produce pigment. So you'll end up being an albino, okay? So A is hypostatic to C, C is epistatic. It's masking if you're the effect of whatever A is, all right? The last example is something called interaction, okay? Uh, phenotype is determined by the combination of dominant and recessive alleles of two genes. It's a little bit like co-dominance, but this is where two genes are gonna end up forming um, uh, one uh, phenotype. And it's not two alleles contributing, we're talking about two completely separate genes here that interact to um, give the particular uh, characteristic at the end. Essentially, we're looking at a typical dihybrid cross, but instead of the two genes coding for two separate characteristics, they both contribute to just one. The example we'll look at is the shape of the crest on a chicken's head, which is coded for by two genes, genes R, and gene P. So if we look at walnut, for example, the phenotype walnut, a particular shape of this crest, um, and that is coded for by heterozygous. So we've got big R, little r, big P, little p. Um, we've got the four different gametes associated with heterozygous individuals. We're gonna put them into our classic um, four by four Punnett square, and we get our nine to three to three to one um, ratio okay, um, at the end.